So a little more formal than we normally go here, but I'm going to read a short statement from my end just so the folks in our listening audience can understand because we are broadcasting this live on Faye TV. That, that's about as close as she can get, Ray, just for the social distancing side there. All right, so first up, I'm Kevin Arado with the Corporate Communications Department here with the City of Fayetteville. Behind me, Mayor Mitch Colvin, who's going to step up and share some remarks after I lay out a couple things here, if you just uh, uh, listen for just a second here. First, thank you for coming today. Uh, the mayor is going to be sharing information today about the curfew that's going into effect here as a result of the COVID-19 challenges across the city. Before we begin, as this is a somewhat unusual arrangement for a press event in that we almost had to pool all of the media uh, let me ask a couple things. Uh, first, you see our sign language interpreter, American Sign Language interpreter off to my right, your left. If you could, folks, include her in your shot. Uh, we're trying to keep the social distancing thing going on here, uh, but we'd like uh, to include that if we could for folks that need that service. Uh, second, as I mentioned, this is being broadcast via FayTV.net and shared on Facebook Live as well. Uh, for those of you who are watching, we are adhering to the social distancing requirements here uh, that stipulates 10 or less in this room, uh, which is what about we've got right now. For our listening audience, we only have allowed a small number of media to come in here so that we could keep that social distancing and gathering of less than 10 in adherence with the governor's state of emergency remarks. Uh, and afterwards, finally, after the mayor's uh, opening remarks and while he's taking questions, I'll be off to the side over here reading some questions from media that weren't able to come but wanted to participate as well. And as a reminder today, more importantly than ever before, I would remind or ask the media, when you've got a question, which we'll take afterwards, please raise your hand. Maine over here will come to you with a mic. Please use the mic. I know we can hear you up here, but our listening audience cannot. Uh, so make sure you speak into the mic. Take those questions, one question and a follow-up from Maine, and we'll move on to the next. We'll answer all your questions. Um, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. Thank you again for coming today. I've got copies of the mayor's uh, declaration up here that we can share with you afterwards. Uh, and uh, over to Mayor Mitch Colvin. Thank you, Mr. Rada. Uh, well, good evening. As he said, this was uh, really not intended to be a, a press conference. It was more so a press release. Uh, but then I started to get several inquiries from many of you about uh, the direction. Uh, as you know, COVID-19 is a very unique situation. Uh, it's unlike natural disaster, or hurricane, or, or things that we've dealt with before. And I think this global pandemic is causing uh, leadership on both the federal, state, and local level, and all, all levels of government uh, to make adjustments and to do whatever it is that we think we're capable of doing to keep our citizens safe, which is top priority. And so with that being said, uh, declared a state of emergency several weeks ago when uh, we first uh, learned about the, the virus and, and had our first cases here in Cumberland County. And if we keep in mind, if we look back initially, we had uh, initially two cases several weeks ago, and now it's up to 18, uh, maybe 19. And so this is a, a fast-moving situation that requires us to do things uh, that we haven't done. And I'll say up front before we get into our Q&A that I do not have the, all of the answers to uh, what we need to do as a community. But what I will say is that the city council and myself are willing to do whatever we can that's within our capability to slow the spread of this uh, virus in, in our community. You know, a lot of cities are dealing with this uh, that are reeling with how to deal with an overrun of their health care systems. We are praying uh, for those communities, certainly, but we are certainly praying that that is not the case here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And with that being said, we are all, this is a plea to the public, we are all going to have to make some temporary sacrifices, some temporary inconveniences uh, in order to, to defeat this global pandemic uh, here in our community. And so um, today I've asked the uh, city attorney uh, to, after consulting with many members of the city council, to uh, prepare an order of curfew that will take effect tomorrow night at 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, of course, you know, we are following closely to the lead of the governor, Governor Cooper, who released a stay-at-home order, um, which uh, covers a, a lot of areas, but he left room in those orders for local jurisdictions to make the adjustments that they needed. And I've consulted with his office numerous occasions, and because he is the governor of the entire state of 100 counties, there are different problems. There are different uh, challenges. There are different things that urban areas endure that some of the other areas that are less densely populated 
uh, did not have to deal with. And because of that, he left the ability for local, local jurisdictions to make adjustments to the order. Uh, the order, as you know, covers a number of things. It, it has a classification for essential uh, services versus non-essential services. Uh, I think North Carolina Department of Revenue is making that distinction. So if you're a business, uh, and I receive a lot of inquiries about who's considered essential, who's, who's considered non-essential. Um, that covers a lot. It tells us that those are, are reasons and provisions along with the things that we need to do to live on a daily basis, to get food, uh, get our medicine, to check on family members. All of those things are certainly uh, acceptable in the governor's order. What we're looking to do here with the curfew, uh, certainly there, there is no magic bullet to this, uh, is that we need to make sure that we emphasize the importance of the stay-at-home portion of his order as it relates to the public streets and the, the public right-of-waves of the city of Fayetteville so that our first responders, our police chief and her team, our fire uh, chief and his team are able to do the things they needed to do in this community. You know, and what we found was that there are uh, situations, as we all know, and I haven't validated or verified all of these, but there, there are situations to where we are, we are have social gatherings that have really been discouraged. We've tried to communicate and emphasize the importance uh, to ask people not to do this, and it's happening in our community. And this weekend, there were, there were a number of events at some of the uh, uh, local parks, uh, all-terrain vehicle parks or other places that had mass amounts of people that you know, really is contrary to all of this. And so this is really an attempt uh, by the local government to discourage large social gatherings. Also, private and public social gatherings are, are notated in here. Uh, this is, you know, house parties or house gatherings or cookouts. Folks, all of that are things that we need you to put on hold. We understand that this is, is the time of year where we, we typically enjoy those kinds of activities. But we're in a unique situation, and so we have never been down this road before. So with that, the intent of this order is to continue to emphasize to the citizens of Fayetteville the importance of the governor's stay-at-home instructions. Uh, it is to put a little bit more structure for our local community between the hours of 9 p.m. and, and uh, 6 a.m., and it is to uh, discourage and to include public and private gatherings on a social level which is really the intent of this. So with that, I will uh, open up for any questions that I can ask. I'll say any legal questions that you ask, because I'm not an attorney, I will refer to our city attorney, but I'll do the best I can, so. Why don't we start with you over in the corner here, since Maine's right next to you. Uh, yes, just to be clear, uh, to start with a curfew, there's a curfew, and are you also imposing some sort of order that stops or um, not only discourages, but forbids social gatherings? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Devane. So from what I understand, there were, uh, there was a portion to the order that dealt with uh, public gatherings uh, on public, on private residents outside, exterior, We're certainly not trying to enforce what happens in, in, within the walls or confines of someone's home, but we're discouraging and including that into large gatherings in the exterior portion of, of our residents, as well as in, in public areas. And so we, we, we dealt with that uh, very superficially about a week ago where we had uh, started to close down our rec centers and our public parks and, and, and people have been canceling large scale events that were scheduled, but we still have this occurring in private residents and in other parts of the city. So this will address to uh, those areas as well. Okay, another thing right quick, your uh, discussions with the city council, can you kind of go more into detail about uh, what they thought about it? Was, did so they all so agree basically they, they, they kind of had questions. Uh, you know, I, I talked to uh, most of the members on council. We, we have a lot on our plates, but, you know, our, our emergency declaration process, uh, the city council allows, uh, you know, the mayor and the manager to, to make decisions uh, that need to be made quickly without us convening meetings. And so... We didn't have a lot of meetings that were scheduled, but I did speak to member men, members of the board and there was a, a general consensus, but they had not seen the document to know the details. And so most of the feedback that I got from the council were basically trying to get an understanding about the details of it. Kayla, anything next, Michael? 
Uh, so one thing we've uh, been seeing a lot of with the recent announcement is uh, some people, it's been mixed, some believe this is the right way to, right direction, others are saying this is a bit extreme. Uh, what's your take on those who believe this may be an extreme order? Well, anytime you, uh, you know, and this is nothing that I take lightly. Uh, I've talked about it, I've, I've looked at it, I've contemplated, debated it uh, for, for several days. Um, and I think that I would rather err on the side of caution and save lives in the city of Fayetteville than to ever have an outbreak here that, that cost us lives or, or our health care system to collapse. And so for those who have an opinion about it, I'm sure they have one and I respect it, but this was not a decision that I made, you know, lightly, that I took lightly. And, and I wanted to be very prudent in making that decision. And the, the sharp increase of the numbers of uh, cases that we have here in Cumberland County kind of prompted me to, uh, to make this, this announcement. Another question, too. Uh, is this order expected to go concurrently with the order that the governor has made as far as the shelter? Sure. I mean, you know, he's the chief executive of the state, and so uh, his his order provides a framework, but as I said, it, it allowed jurisdictions to do things that were tailored more to the problems or the issues that they needed to deal with in their specific communities. And so if you look across the state, uh, you have other stay-at-home orders in multiple jurisdictions that, you know, go somewhat farther, uh, a little farther than the governor's. I saw Wake County, I think, or Durham County. Uh, had one where it was a little more restrictive, and his order did allow for that uh, for the local on the local level. Some of the larger cities like Raleigh and Charlotte and Greensboro that have more cases, they haven't done what you're doing here. Do you see that? Why do you why are you doing it now as opposed to waiting till one of them that have more cases? Well, you know, we don't really lead from behind. You know, uh, I think that that leadership entails, and and certainly I don't know. Uh, what the, the the information is for any of those jurisdictions, and I respect the uh, local government and their decisions there. As it relates to Fayetteville, uh, I want to always be proactive and out front and ahead of, of things. And we have been very fortunate to this point to only have 18 or 19 cases versus 70, 80, 100 cases like some of those other areas. And I think that, you know, once you get that type of uh, uh, presence in your community, that, that it it has a lot more impact, and, and some of the things like what we're doing today uh, may or may not fix that. And so I don't want to speak to specifics about those areas, uh, but I think this is the right thing for the city of Fayetteville. As far as the timing, because you said it's been nine cases, why those hours, why not ten? Well, you, you tried to be, you know, you tried to, to take all things into account, which, which you know, I, I'm the first to say that, that I'm sure that this will, will impact someone negatively, that out of 200 and plus thousand people that, that their lives will be impacted. But we looked at the time, which was the highest peak time for what we're trying to target, which is social gathering, some of these uh, recreational gatherings, these, these after hours, after work type gatherings that really are not conducive to containing uh, the virus here in our city. And so that's kind of how that was chosen. We know that most uh, work times and after work to give people ample time to get the necessary supplies they need, and we wanted to get it started early so that we didn't impact or impede uh, someone's work day. How will it be enforced? Well, uh, I'll leave that up to, to our chief, but uh, of course they have a full plate, and, and, and hopefully this may be a complement to what they're already dealing with because now you have an order that they're dealing with it have a, has a lot of exclusions and you have a lot of traffic and movement. And so I'm sure they're, they're stretched thin, but she may give you the, the details as to, to how the police will uh, enforce, you know, the order. So a couple of questions, Mayor, from uh, write-ins that we had before. So I'll ask this one on behalf of Jared uh, from Spectrum and Bill Kirby from The Observer. Uh, is there an end date in sight? I think Michael kind of asked that question, but is this going to dovetail uh, with what the governor's already got It, it will on? run concurrent with the governor's and if, uh, if we see that, that it needs to be rescinded early, you know, we will take a look at that, but certainly I'll follow the lead of uh, the governor who's the chief executive of the state. And then another question here from uh, Spectrum as well is what message do you have to the people who are not practicing social distancing and getting together in large groups? You've said that, but I'll ask it again because I know you were really well, want to Well, absolutely. This, today's conference is for you. We are asking you, that, that, you know, the vast majority of people will we'll comply and do the things that, that are in the first order. And you, you don't really need to do it, do it again or to tighten it. These are for, this is for the people in our community and we, we're needing you, 
pleading with you to please follow uh, the direction of the law. You have a state order, now you have a local order uh, to follow the stay at home requirement, to stop the socializing, to keep your numbers and your social distance. So um, this message is for them and we really need their attention and we need their compliance. And then a final question from Mr. Kirby as well, uh, asks about citing specific instances. I know you did cite one, but we saw some exchanges over the weekend with several other council members who've witnessed them. Can you share a little bit of that with our audience so they understand again, well, you've seen these things happen before. Well, you, you do, you, you, you receive pictures and you, you see the exchange of people who are gathering at, at, at residents who are having cookouts, who are having uh, just because there are not a lot of, of, of recreational activities available to people, so they're, they're improvising. Uh, but it is causing us to put ourselves in harm's way. If the governor's guidance for, for crowd gathering is 10 and under, uh, that applies to you at your home or in, in public. And right now, we just need to, to bring a little bit more attention to that here in the city of Fayetteville, that uh, people who are having cookouts or, or things on the exterior of their home where you have uh, more than 10 people, that is going to be uh, something that we'll enforce. So. Okay. Any other questions? Kayla. Hi. Um, okay. Will this impact the business community at all? Like, say there's a drive through food place that's still open and someone gets hungry at 930 at night. Are they still going to be able to go out and get food? And then what if they're going out to, like, help their family in some way? That can still happen, right? Yeah. So, so there are exclusions in the order uh, for essential business operations as it relates to uh, things that are essential for life sustainment, uh, supply of food, medicine, essential household goods, those things are excluded. Also, all governmental uh, operations, activities like the Postal Service or any governmental activity or function that needs to occur, uh, we certainly don't want to get in between that and uh, any essential operations for infrastructure or utility repairment. So there's a, there's a pretty detailed list of exclusions that uh, – that should allow people to do those things that they need to do. And of course, if you have any type of medical emergency in danger or anything like that, that uh, there's exceptions to any of this for that. Gotcha, and I just have one more thing. Are you worried about crime going up at all? Um, I know I've heard of like domestic violence calls going up. Um, say there's someone at home and they're in this huge fight. I mean, is and there's like nowhere else for them to go. Well, first of all, if, if, if someone is in danger in their home uh, because of a domestic situation or otherwise, this order uh, allows exceptions for you to go and seek safety or to call 911 or do whatever you need to do using common sense practices. Uh, I cannot necessarily say that we can draw a correlation between domestic violence going up and a curfew. And so I'm, I'm just, you know, I just don't know if I have enough data to support that. This is a tense time where stress levels are high because of this, not just because of this curfew, but because we've lived the last two to three weeks in uncharted territory. And so uh, I'm hopeful that uh, people will just settle down. You'll get the things you need. Your, your federal, state, and, and local government officials are doing what we can to make sure you have those things that you need, but we just need you to stay at home when you're on non-essential business. All right, any other questions? Michael, one more. Yeah, another question to you is just uh, you guys were discussing um, as far as the punishments for infringing these curfews. Uh, any idea what those are going to be at this point in time? I uh, haven't, haven't read the order as to, to what that is, whether uh, it's criminal, it's a civil penalty, or both. I'm not sure. Uh, that may be a question for the city attorney or the police chief. I'm not sure. <laughs> if I had to answer to that, well. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I did hear, um, in, in all seriousness, that uh, people should relax, that, that our suppliers, with the exception of, of the toilet paper, uh, have a steady supply of, uh, of food services, so that we are discouraging people to go out and hoard because uh, grocery stores are, are, are well supplied. Did understand that our seniors, some of our seniors are having a difficult time uh, getting what they need and so i think some of our local grocery stores and hats off to them for this are uh, providing times just for seniors to come in and get the, the necessary things that they need so um, any information i found on that i'll share it with you all right thank all you right. guys thank you very much and uh, while he's leaving here i do have copies of the order up here for you i can share with you thank you